right there. It will change that guy's snowboarding. So today we're gonna to be riding Keystone and it's gonna be insane. I got some really cool things planned for us, but before we go to the mountain, I gotta ship out literally 50, 60 hoodies because I just put them on sale and people are going freaking bananas for them. So we gotta, I'm gonna do a little time lapse. We're gonna go pack a bunch of hoodies and literally ship these things out and then we're gonna to head to the mountain. So let's go. I'm gonna put you down and we'll do a time lapse. So we're at Keystone here. We're gonna be riding, we're gonna be vibing, and I wanna cover the most common snowboarder mistakes when it comes to body position. And if you can nail down these body positions, it's literally gonna change your snowboarding. You're gonna be able to prevent injury, have way more fun, do cooler things, and overall be able to ride longer until you have like freaking gray hair or you're bald like me. down and I want you to identify which position is awesome but which one is not. the rest of this video I want to talk about the biggest mistakes that snowboarders make and a lot of it comes down to the wrong body position at the wrong time now there's things us things that snowboarders that we do is like okay this feels intuitive but does that mean that it's like the best position for the job if I'm gonna go race NASCAR and show up in a minivan yeah maybe able to get the job done I can get some laps in but doesn't actually mean that it's the best thing for the job so as we go down here I want to talk about specifically on our toe side edge, how to be in a better body position. And obviously there's ideal body positions for when you're going straight down, when you're on your toe side edge, when you're on heel side edge, different body posi positions to make sure that you're maximizing that. Now regardless if you're a weekend warrior, you're riding some of the gnarliest train or riding the park, these fundamental principles while you're snowboarding remain the same. So we're gonna cruise down and specifically for the next like little bit, talk about the awesome, the not so awesome, positions of toe side. a really good prime example of being in an awesome body position. The ideal position that you're in is one that maximizes your balance, your turnability, and your adaptability to whatever's going on. So if you're in that classic high school position, shoulders, hips, and knees are stacked over each other, for the most part, you're gonna be in a most athletic position, you're gonna have a lot of options. So going down that run, I was able to be in a strong position on my toe side edge, meaning my shins were pressed against the front of my boots, my weight was stacked over the toe side edge, and my chest was up. Now being in this position, what's great is I can have the ability to move through my spine. I have the ability to look around, but I have the ability to stay balanced. And that came in place 
when there was like some sketchy ice and this random dude came out of nowhere. Granted, he has a right away, so if I hit him, it was my fault. But he came out of nowhere, but I was in a position where I could adjust, adapt, and be awesome to not hit him because I was in a position that allowed me to have options. Now, we're gonna ride down here, and I'm gonna show you like a position that is very common for snowboarders, and it's not an awesome position. Then we're gonna talk about why this is not awesome, and we're gonna talk about how to fix it. We're also gonna do this for heel side and a couple other things, but like literally, if you can figure this out, this can be like the absolute, mo absolute most game changer for your snowboarding. Call your partner. Let's go. I remember you. Good to see you guys. Yeah. 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 Have a good run. Yeah. Woo! common position and I think what it comes from is when we're on our toe side edge we're, we're really trying to be closer to the ground so we're not so scared and we feel like if we slip out we fall we can save ourselves we are more likely going to slip out and fall because you're in that position now when I do these turns notice how my spine is more upright my hips are forward and I'm pressing my shins against my boot allowing me to be in a better body position for more options <laughs> The cool thing about that body position is as I'm in this balanced position, I can determine to get on a carb, get on a skid instantaneously, and it's not a significant movement to be able to lock in that edge or not. So then I have an option to be able to avoid somebody. I have an option to be able to do a trick or do something cool, because instantaneously I can carb or skid. If you're looking for a carb or skid video, I have some link down in the description below. But literally having this as an option allows you to do some really awesome stuff. Now, you did see that I was able to get low and do a really cool turn. So yes, there's different body positions for different applications. But overall, if I can be in a stronger balance position on my toe side edge, I can handle ice and I can avoid people or do cool tricks. So now we're going to go around the corner. We're going to talk about another body position that is very, very, very common and not awesome. And let's see if you can identify which one is more awesome and less awesome. So as you saw there, I'm literally just riding and vibing on that lower section, doing a lot of fun stuff, throwing tricks. But above, all of a sudden, I'm in a very weak position. I apply a lot of pressure to my knee, which is really bad for your knee. You're rotated, super awkward. So every time I want to make a toe side turn, I have to put a lot of energy and time to go to that toe side edge, which means it's delayed. So if I'm in that body position where I'm super back seat and open, going through trees is 10 times harder because your turn takes 10 times longer. It is so much more challenging. And yes, can you get relatively good at it? Yeah, but you're gonna miss out on the full potential of your snowboarding, which is throwing tricks, which is being in control, which is having way more fun and more technical terrain. So it's literally being able to put yourself in a better body position. So when it comes to your heel side edge, think about taking your shoulder and pointing it over the board, allowing both knees to have the weight even. And now you're in an athletic position. Now we talked about the toe side, talked about the heel side, but do I want you to be in this static position the whole entire time? Maybe. Let's keep riding and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Man. 
fantastic. Oh yeah. It's a little wild out here. Yeah, it is. It's getting crazy. It's so wild, but it's like fun. Oh yeah. I think my favorite yeah. part about Keystone is there's never a line. Yeah. That's yeah, you can see it. Now you guys might be trying to roast me in the comments about that it was really dangerous and sketchy the way I was riding on that, that run, but I wanted to prove the point of that in sticky situations like that, you need to be in control. You need to put yourself in the best position to be in control. And that's literally what tight riding or tree riding or technical riding is, is being in control. So can I be in a body position that allows me to do that stuff? Well, that's the goal. I didn't hit anybody. I didn't almost hit somebody. I like did a little trick, control. Did a little trick, control. But I was also super smart about it. I'm not trying to just take people out and like do that kind of stuff. I'm not trying to do that. So being smart obviously is part of it. But I wanted to illustrate the point is you can do really amazing things if you're in control, but you gotta have the control and it stems from potty position. So we're gonna cruise down. There's like a fun little jump thing side over here. Let's go hit that, that sounds pretty fun. And then let's continue uh, going and talking about making you more awesome. Let's go try to do a trick. Tricks? hit for a couple runs now but it's like in the shade it's kind of sketchy that was uh pretty fun just gotta you know a darting into the middle of the run i wanted to wait some extra time to make sure we don't get embodied so one of the very first things to make you more awesome in snowboarding is simply bend both knees at the same time it's gonna allow you to be in a more athletic position and don't put all your weight on the back knee. Make sure that the lead knee has some flex in it, allowing you to be in a more athletic position. Right from the get go, that's gonna help a lot. So really remember to put weight on that lead knee. Right there, it will change that guy's snowboarding. So weight on the lead knee is gonna help a lot. And then every time you do a heel side turn, it's okay to let your shoulders open to the heel side or your shoulders to turn to the toe side. But notice that I'm anticipating this and I'm able to stay in a nice balanced position with my chest up. Then if I want to sink down, all I got to do is lower my belly button and get low and do what, you know, do like a high school squat, like a traditional squat. It's a, it's a nice thing. Next time we go snowboard, practice that. freaking love side hits and turning this whole entire mountain into a playground and I don't know if you watch like I literally am looking all over the place trying to have like spatial awareness so I don't get bodied but I'm also evaluating the terrain so I can be in the best body position I gotta get scanned hold on beep, beep. Oh, yes but then as much as I need to be in the sorry skirt, the right body position it's all about anticipating what I'm gonna do. So as I see a side hit, I'm determining 
what's the trick that I want to do? So for there, it was like a front side 360 off the toes. Okay, how do I do that? Am I going to drift or am I not going to drift? Where am I going? How do I do it? But then I got to anticipate what's happening. I got to anticipate that I'm going to be taking off on my toe side edge. I got to anticipate my speed. I got to anticipate how gnarly the actual jump is. So that whole time it's evaluating, allowing to put myself in that position as early as possible as an anticipatory move, not a reactionary move. And the goal of that is to put yourself in an anticipatory position. What do I want to do and how do I put myself in the position to do what I want to do? Now, obviously that comes from a lot of reading the terrain, a lot of experience, a lot of understanding what you need to do. And that's why I make all these YouTube videos for you guys so that you guys can know what to do, how to do it, especially on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts. I'm trying to give you guys the knowledge so you can anticipate that. And then there's also the big part about reactionary if i'm in a body position then i have the most amount of options as somebody cuts you off or somebody comes out of nowhere or you hit an icy freaking spot that you're in a reactionary position that gives you the most options for success and we saw the other day this snowboarder was riding down slipping out on their toe side edge overcompensated too much caught their heel side edge smacked their head on the ground and i was like ah oh, so sad so being able to understand how to anticipate or react. The last thing we're going to talk about is squatting down and getting low. Sometimes you want to get low so you can jump over something, you can pop, you can, you know, be dynamic or you got to avoid something. You know, the goal is to actually get your belly button to get as low as possible and so that you're not just hunching down to get in that body position. So if you could do a squat where your chest is relatively upright and your tailbone goes close to the ground, that's ideal. But if your chest goes down and your tailbone's like pointed in that direction, that is not as awesome because you're actually distributing your balance not in a favorable way for snowboarding. So if you're looking at trying to improve your mobility, come join me. I do classes every single Monday and Friday specifically for snowboarding. They're about 20 to 30 minutes long, but I have a special deal going on right now. So check out down below because I got a special gift for you just for signing up. So we're going to show you some squat positions. So this run, I'm going to ride, vibe, and show you some squats. Of the day snowboarding is a very very edible freaking sport because at any time you got different conditions different speed different things and ideally if you could just implement the two tips about being in a stronger body position and increasing your range of motion it's going to change a lot of your snowboarding so i appreciate you guys vibing and hanging out with me subscribe to the channel because we're putting a whole bunch of nerd long form short term short form all sorts of great stuff see ya nothing below we out